Orange. Oh. At the hotel. At the hotel. River Hodder, Upper Reaches, in at Whitewell Beat. I'm staying in that room up there. Fishing in Michael Lake, 10 foot 2 weight. And this first World Nymph Clear floater. It's made out of polyurethane and by nature it's much more slick. Much more slick. Shoots. Easily. Michael Lake, 10 foot 2 weight. Clear prototype World Nymph Lime. Backing braid and indicator, six inches. Seven feet, ah, six feet down to the first dropper, which is a March Brown. An old March Brown. And then down to that, three foot to a Duracell jig. Beginning March, see how we get on. Swinging March Browns, eh? Woohoo! What about a single spade? Oh, swinging wets. I went from reservoirs to rivers. All I saw was cast down and it swings it across. I never knew. Dead drift. And that's what this gives you, dead drift. It's so perfectly balanced, especially with this reel. Very little wrist movement. See, there's none of this moving your arms around doing all this. All the action's in the tip. It's so delicate, the rod. You just flick it with your hand. So you know at the end of the drift, you just play it like that. The controls, like, I've never felt anything like it. This, particularly this 10 foot two weight, so responsive, little tiny flick of the wrist. You back in, love it. Why do I like tip action rod when I'm nymphing? Okay, if you've got a rod that's 10 foot long, but it bends a lot all the way to the butt, which is good for fighting fish, it's not good because it shortens the rod. And in nymphing, you need to keep the length of the rod very little sag on the line over that current. See this current? Fish are on the far seam. Reach over currents like that. So you need to, to retain as much of its length as possible, number one. But then you create a stiff rod because it doesn't bend. Ah, so the trick is to make a tip action rod that when hits a fish, turns into basically a fiberglass rod. Very responsive. It's 20% thinner, so there's nothing to move around. Nice, gray graphite insert, very dull. Extra slim cork handle, just look at that. At the hotel, you get the hotel. Treat me like I'm for sale. At the hotel. This feature here, I've not spoken about it a lot yet. I don't know if you can see, but it sets the guides onto the side if you choose that. And that keeps the line off the blank. And now, you see how it plays. I talked about the fast action bit before. Now it turns into a soft rod with lots of shock absorption. This is, to be honest, a rare grayling on a very difficult day. I might not get this chance again. I want to get this fish in, I really do. Also, it's for camera. It will look good. I've got confidence that this rod's gonna do it and I'll show you how. Nice grayling. Fast current. I come out. See the rod? Taking all the shock of it. No drama. Light tip it, three pound. You can hear in my voice, I'm shaking. I, I want this fish. You know, it's all very well, as you say, in a stock pond. I've got 45 minutes on this river, I want to get a fish. And here's a nice one. So, 10 foot two weight, true two weight. It's still only starting to bend properly from the top half. This is a good grayling. It's okay. It's a fast current, there's a lot of water on. Now watch this. It turns it from a cage fight into a chess game. How have you ever known a grayling to come to your hand like this? Like a salmon, watch. And when do you ever get to hold a grayling to camera and keep them still?
they subdue the fish. That's why I fish like. Well, this is my room, and there's the river. 1.9 meters on it, it's come up a meter, 1.2 meters overnight. So that means I can't finish this grayling vlog. So, I've switched venue, come to Stocks Reservoir. Still the same 10 foot two weight. Now, let's see. Yesterday, I fished for 45 minutes on a river that was just coming up in flood, had one fish. 10 foot two weight, you saw me nymphing. Now, forced to change, this is the only rod I've got on me, I'm on Stocks Reservoir. It's quite a strong wind, but I know that the fish are up. There's no rising, but I know people are catching them with floating lines. So I've changed from a nymph line to a Jeremy Lucas dry fly, two weight, floating line, 33 foot long. I've actually got quite a uh, long leader on now. It's, eh, no, it's about 13 feet. It's got one dropper on it. I've got a cormorant on the point and a buzzer on the dropper. It's as simple as that. I've made a fluorocarbon leader because I want to cut through the surface. And I want to demonstrate that I can still use this rod on still waters as well. So, see how we get on. People think that, you know, a 10 foot two weight or three weight or even a full weight is a nymphing rod. No, for me, I want to go as light as possible, as long as possible. Yeah, sure. I'd really prefer a 10 foot four weight maybe right now, bank fishing, bit of wind, but if I hook a fish here on this 10 foot two way, I'll get it in. It's nice fishing, I'm enjoying it. Already. There we go. There we go. So we took the cormorant on the point. Five pound tip it, look at that rod bent. They fight deep, like a surge. Doo -doo. You know, there's not a lot of splashing around. And when they come in, they tend to slide in because they're not jerking on the rod. Just a lot of fun on a two weight. You know, it's a windy day, I'm bank fishing. Don't need a seven weight. Yeah, you don't need heavy gear, right?